In this video, we're going to cover briefly how to calculate um, a paired t-test in the STAT software JASP. Um, I kind of talked about JASP a little bit in my last video, but just in case you didn't get to watch that, um, it's a video on independent t-tests in JASP. JASP is just kind of a um, is similar to SPSS. On their website, they refer to it as a low-fat version of SPSS. So um, it's very it's very similar in that respect. Um, they're trying to make it almost a little bit more than SPSS. So it's still in the development process. There are certain things that you still cannot do, but I encourage you to stick around. Um, from what I've seen of the program, it really is pretty great. Um, very point and click happy. I like how simplistic it is and how easy it is to get the information that you need in terms of statistics. Um, before we actually calculate the t-test, I'm once again going to give you a little bit of background on a paired t-test. Um, in a paired samples t-test, we're moving from independent t to dependent t. So rather than having sample means from two separate or independent groups or samples of people, um, we have two means from the same sample. So if we're still thinking in terms of the last video I made um, regarding the cloak, um, rather than comparing the cloak versus no cloak group, maybe we want to see if um, the people that were all in the cloak group um, were more mischievous in week one or week two. So instead of looking at two separate groups of people, you're looking at the same group of people multiple times. Um, so you just kind of have to be aware of the matched nature of the dependent results when you're doing a paired samples t-test. Um, we're going to be using a different data set and in this data set um, you'll see it says PAL cell and PAL ACC and there is also a gender category. We won't really be using that in this video but you can also use that to calculate um, some statistics and do some things with that if you just feel like um, exploring JASP a little bit more. Um, but the PA, PAL cell column, um, PAL in this study just stands for physical activity level and the cell is just the measure of physical activity level um, with a cell phone. So think about if you have, you know, I know that my iPhone has like that health app, so it keeps track of how many steps you're taking and you could add, you know, your height, weight, heart rate, that kind of thing. Um, so it's that kind of measure of physical activity. The ACC one is um, an accelerometer. So rather than using an app, you're actually using a device that was designed to measure your physical activity level. And in this particular study, the null hypothesis would be that there is no significant difference between the physical activity level um, measured with a cell phone versus an accelerometer. So the null hypothesis would say that there's no difference, that they both produce um, similar means in this case. So the logic behind um, the dependent T, it's very similar in theory to an independent T test. Like I said, you just kind of need to keep in mind the matched nature of it. Um, and the biggest difference between the independent T and the T is rather than using um, standard error as the measure of variability, you're using standard error of the differences. So just make sure you keep that part in mind. Um, now that we have covered some of the basics of the paired samples t-test in theory, let's see how it actually works in the STAT software. Um, just like the independent t-test, it's really very simple. Um, just go ahead, click t-tests, paired samples, um, in this, you can see already that it's kind of blocked gender out because that would be considered a grouping variable. So that would, that would be the variable we would use if we wanted to calculate an independent T. We might see how men versus women um, 
compared with their physical activity levels. So again, I have selected that I don't think that there's going to be a difference. I'm assuming that the means are going to be roughly equal. And remember that they can differ a little bit, but we're assuming that they will be equal. So I'm just going to move each of these over. And you can see it gives you your T value, your degrees of freedom, and your P, which in this case is less than 0.001, which does imply that there is a significant difference um, between the groups. So um, it doesn't tell you specifically which group necessarily is greater than the other, but if you click descriptives, it will tell you which group has the higher mean level of physical activity, and it'll also tell you the standard deviation and the standard error. So in this case, um, there was a higher level of physical activity tracked with an accelerometer um, rather than what was tracked in your cell phone. Now keep in mind we're using the same participants just um, with two different measures. So it's the same participant that has been tested multiple times. Um, so we've acknowledged that we didn't think that there were going to be differences, but now that we do see that there is a difference, um, the larger the difference between the means, the more we can assume that it is due to um, what we have manipulated as experimenters. So since the difference is um, a pretty decent size, it's decently large, also you can look at effect size, which is 0.83, um, we would assume that since the mean difference is so great that it is due to the experimenter's manipulation and it's not simply due to chance. So that is just the basics of how to calculate a paired samples t-test in JASP.